Hey guys, welcome to Tech News Day, and would you look at the time, this episode is sponsored by Vincero and Squarespace. And uh, you'll hear more about them later on. But first, the tech news. Yeah, last week we spent most of Tech News Day calling out YouTube and Facebook for their typical BS. And it looks like this week won't be much different. One particular gripe that we've had with both of these companies for a long time is their reliance on algorithms instead of human employees for much of their content moderation. Despite the fact that algorithms have proven time and time again that they are pretty inadequate uh, as a solution to these problems. Uh, while talking about that, though, we also acknowledge that uh, despite humans being better at content moderation than algorithms, they're also much more vulnerable to becoming traumatized from constantly having to look at all of the most horrible things that the Internet has to offer. Yeah, we actually talked about this exact problem a little over two years ago on our old channel that doesn't exist anymore. In December of 2016, two former Microsoft employees who worked on their online safety team sued Microsoft for basically giving them severe PTSD and not providing them with adequate psychological support for it. It's unclear whatever happened to that lawsuit. There's really no information about it out there beyond the initial reports. But what these guys alleged was pretty messed up. Yeah. Their job was basically just looking at photos and videos of murder and sexual abuse all day, every day. And unsurprisingly, this had a very negative effect on both men's mental health. Yeah, lots of similar stories have come out over the past decade or so about the psychological toll that content moderation has on the people who do it. And this week, The Verge published an article about Facebook's content moderators in the US. And uh, yeah, not really a job we're envious of at all. Uh, writer Casey Newton specifically spoke to Arizona-based employees of an IT company called Cognizant who Facebook contracts their content moderation out to. So everyone he spoke to used pseudonyms because they're all bound by pretty restrictive NDAs that not only prevent them from talking to the press about the psychological toll of their jobs, but also to even their own families and friends. Why are you so upset all the time? <laughs> I can't tell you. Just tell me. Nah, I can't do it. Mm, NDA. All right, keep it. Keep Just keep it, it bottled up. Keep your secrets then. <laughs> Oh, he's literally de de deteriorating mentally in front of me. Yeah. Sad. Keep your secrets. Anyways, not, are, not only are these people looking at some seriously messed up photos and videos all day long, but they're strongly pressured to not talk about it with <laughs> anyone. Which, yeah, it un understandably, it makes them feel isolated in their trauma. Does NDA, do NDAs extend to psychiatrists and psychologists? Uh, yeah, but I think there's, the thing is, yeah. these people are not making nearly enough money to, to be able to actually, afford that. Yeah, afford like quality. And, like, and as much as they need to. Probably. Yeah. But you just don't just go and better help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. There's an app for that. Uh, uh, unlike actual Facebook employees who rake in the average salary of around $240,000 a year, these contractors doing content moderation in Arizona are making just over $28,000 a year. So, yeah, you're right. Not really lending itself to being able to probably yeah. get away from work. For Not a lot of time therapy to, money in there. Yeah, and then to also pay for the therapy. Mm -hmm. They also don't receive any of the lavish benefits that Facebook employees receive. They do get free psychological counseling, which is good, until they're fired or they quit. And then they don't get it anymore. Mm -hmm. Just left And it. a lot of people apparently don't make it past like training. They're like, wait, fuck this. Yeah. I'm leaving. And then they no longer have the, the access to the therapist, but they still have all the all the memories they made along the way. You wanna know how I got these scars? Working for Facebook. <laughs> it's very easy for these people to get fired also uh, by just making a few errors in one week. You would imagine that if you make an error on this job and something goes through, very easy to get fired for it because this is some serious shit that you're letting slip through the cracks. Yeah. So it's a stressful job that no, no one really probably wants. It's, it's something where it's like, oh, 28 grand a year? Sure, I'll Woo. go look at some fucked up videos and filter them. Yeah, they're, they're all they're all like recently out of college yeah. too, so it's like yeah, twenty eight grand. I don't know, oh, drive, baby. <laughs> drive lift around or look at fucking murder porn all day. Yeah, yeah. So the ones who do manage to keep their jobs, uh, they don't sound like they're having a very good time. Uh, here's a fun paragraph from the article. The moderators told me it's a place where the conspiracy videos and memes that they see each day gradually lead them to embrace fringe views. One auditor walks the floor promoting the idea that the earth is flat. A former employee told me he has begun to question certain aspects of the Holocaust. Another former employee who told me he has mapped every escape route out of his house and sleeps with a gun at his side said, I no longer believe 9-11 was a terrorist attack. Well, and that sounds ridiculous, but it's like, it's like the scene from Clockwork Orange. It's, <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. The only thing that's missing is the thing keeping their eyes open. Well, we don't know if they have that or not. Yeah. Guys, you're uh, not hitting those numbers. Yeah. All that blinking. Too much blinking. We got a solution for the blinking. Just use the eye wash every hour or so. 
Other employees told The Verge that they worry about form former employees coming back to the office with a gun. And one employee says he started bringing his own gun to work just in case that happens. Good guy. It's a totally thankless, depressing <laughs> job where people cope by getting high on breaks or telling dark jo jokes around the office about suicide. And this is in addition to the fact that each decision they make about content is tracked and audited. If they're too slow, they might get fired. If they correctly remove a piece of content but incorrectly select the specific reason, they might get fired. There's lots of ways to screw this up. Yeah. Now, for example, someone writing, quote, men should be sterilized, that violates Facebook's rules, while autistic people should be sterilized is somehow okay. Huh. Mm. If you get audited and your decisions are found to be below 95% accurate, you might get fired. Yeah. So yeah, it's a great article. It's worth a full read if you're into that kind of uh, in morbid reality. Just getting kind depressed. Of yeah. Um, definitely raises some serious questions and concerns about content moderation in general. Uh, most experts agree at this point that AI is insufficient for content moderation, but the other option is of course humans. And looking at horrible shit all day is not healthy. So a big takeaway here is that if humans are the ones doing this job, uh, they should probably I don't know be paid better. Yeah. Have better access to counseling, be allowed to step away from the job when things get too hard. All those things, they're totally possible for a company as rich as Facebook. So their only real excuse here for not doing them is that they're cheap. And look, the Venn diagram of fast, cheap, and good, and how having all three of them at the same time is impossible, it's literally one of the first things anyone learns in business. It's like yep. day one shit. So it's ridiculous that this is what Facebook expects from their content moderation team. Yeah. The whole system is flawed. But in similar news, Facebook this week found itself in hot water over the fact that Facebook's automated advertising system likes to helpfully suggest terms like Joseph Goebbels, Joseph Mengel, Henrik Himmler, National Socialist Black Metal, and uh, other terms blatantly associated with Nazism. First reported by the LA Times, who ran several tests of the advertising platform, what this means is that not only is it still really easy to run ads on Facebook targeted at neo-Nazis, Facebook will actually go out of its way to help you do it. Oh, I see that you're trying to appeal to some... Pretty nasty people. Some Nazis. Some bad boys. Let me make that a little easier for you. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, of course, thanks to the fact that, as Facebook themselves admit, the search terms are automatically generated based on user activity, and they have no real system in place for reviewing those terms before they get used. Whoops. Uh, they also say that these specific neo-Nazi terms are rarely actually used, which... Sure, but... <laughs> This is far from the first time that Facebook has been called out for their advertising algorithm, allowing some gross and sometimes illegal shit to happen. And, and yet it keeps happening. Uh, the solution, again, is of course to pay more humans to actually pay attention to this stuff and not rely on journalists and members of the public to stress test your platform for you. But again, despite Facebook having more money than God, they're probably not going to do it. Mm. But let's move on because... Uh... We have to talk about that other company who's currently dealing with their own content moderation crisis, YouTube. Hey! Ever since it was pointed out that there's a whole lot of what basically serves as soft core child porn on YouTube, they've been scrambling to do something about it because, once again, they lost a lot of their big advertisers, and those advertisers, they're just taking their business elsewhere. Probably to Facebook. <laughs> this has got to be like the fourth adpocalypse by now. We can't really keep track anymore. There's tiny ones, there's big ones mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. Anyways, one of the ways they're combating this problem is in response to the fact that a lot of this pedo content had comment sections full of timestamps showing exactly when the video featured a kid in a compromising position. So they're now looking for videos that fit that description and just turning off monetization. So this was initially explained on Twitter as, quote, even if your video is suitable for advertisers, inappropriate comments could result in your video receiving limited or no ads. Which understandably upset a lot of people, because it sounds like you can just go to the channel of someone you don't like and just write a bunch of filth in their comment section, and that'll get them demonetized for not something they have no responsibility over. Yeah. Uh, following that outcry, though, YouTube clarified their policy. Except not really. A YouTube spokesman told The Verge, quote, The platform isn't basing these limits on creators' comment sections. Instead, YouTube moderators are evaluating videos that seem likely to attract predatory comments, then restricting advertising as a short-term fix. The same fucking thing, guys. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, basically that's the same thing, just phrased slightly <laughs> differently. But at least it's a short-term thing and not a blanket policy going forward yet. Uh, additionally, it sounds like this mostly just affects people whose videos feature small children. Yeah. So just don't do that. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, YouTube says they've removed more than 400 channels and disabled comments on tens of millions of videos over the past week. They also say they've reported anything illegal that they found to law enforcement, and this is all good. 
But as with so many things like this, it would have been nice if they'd been more on top of the problem and not waited until they got called out in the media. Big advertisers like Epic Games, AT&T, Nestle, and Disney have all pulled their ads from the platform and probably won't be back for a while. AT&T had just returned just to YouTube returned. after a taking a prior. year off. Yeah. So all now, right, safe to, safe to go back in the pool. YouTube's in timeout once again. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that means less money for uh, creators, so. Thanks, YouTube. Meanwhile, advertisers are also pretty unhappy about their ads appearing on videos that push anti-vaccination nonsense, so YouTube is now going through with a machete, just demonetizing every anti-vax channel they find, just left and right, chop chop. Jim Carrey's gonna be really upset when he tries to log into his YouTube channel. Oh man. God damn it! Uh, turns out despite YouTube being kind of proactive about showing medically accurate pro-vaccine results when a person searches something like, are vaccines safe? Um, their up next autoplay function over on the side would still lead people directly to anti-vax content, sometimes in the next video. They're, they're very proud of their <laughs> both sides are Yeah. yeah. Um, it's unclear whether that specific thing is still a problem, but uh, at least ads aren't running on those videos now. We as a company, uh, <laughs> we're very, we're enlightened centrists over here at YouTube. They we kind of are. They kind of are. Yeah. So yeah, like, Look, old diseases like measles and rickets that we supposedly eradicated decades ago are once again on the rise thanks to this exact anti-vax bullshit. So if cutting off their ad revenue means less people choosing not to vaccinate their kids, good. Yeah. So anyways, now it's time for a quick word from this week's sponsors, starting with Vincero. Vincero makes luxury watches handcrafted at fair prices. Vincero's mission is to create compelling luxury timepieces with impeccable craftsmanship to inspire as many people as possible to elevate their game and ultimately live their legacy. For Vincero, luxury is a process. It's not about specs, a price, and luxury isn't just a marketing term. It's about attention to detail and a step-by-step -step process to craft every product. That's what separates Vincero from the competition. It's the belief that you deserve the best, viewer. Vincero has sponsored us before, but you know they're always putting out new products, and this time they've got the Rogue series, which combines the elegance that you see in all their other watches with the durability and water resistance of a sports watch. Mm. There's also plenty of new colors and configurations for their existing watches, so just go check all that out by visiting vincerowatches.com slash technewsdayfeb. Just click the link down below. It's Tech News Day Feb, all one word, yeah. all lowercase. Uh, enter the promo code NEWSDAY at checkout, and you'll get 15% off your entire order. Uh, exceptionally crafted, fairly priced. Get a Vincero watch at vincerowatches.com slash technewsdayfeb. Gotta work on that. And promo code NEWSDAY, just, it's all down below. I started calling it Vincero because that's what Funhouse says. They well, got the same sponsor. That's the, I think that's the actual okay. Italian pronunciation. Ah, okay. Uh, also, this episode is sponsored by Squarespace, uh, a company that I had to use and uh, had a great experience with recently when creating my wedding website. Uh, domains, websites, online stores, marketing tools, analytics, Squarespace does all of that, and it is a all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. They've just added a new feature, email campaigns. Say more, sell more. Stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns, providing consistent content from website to email. Powerful editing tools to make it your own, customizable layouts for any message, and mobile editing so you can send anytime, anywhere. It's just out on, out on the out on the balcony, yeah. enjoying the, the waves crashing in. I'm making websites out here. Mm-hmm. Squarespace lets you quickly and easily create a beautiful website, whether it's for your business, your art, your products, your ideas, you name it. Your wedding. Yeah. Everything's optimized for mobile right out of the box. It's got analytics that help you grow in real time. There's nothing to patch or upgrade ever, and they've got 24-7 award-winning customer support. Head over to squarespace.com slash newsday for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code NEWSDAY to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace.com slash newsday, offer code NEWSDAY. But now back to the news. Uh, remember in January of last year, when everyone in Hawaii briefly thought they were about to be killed in a nuclear missile attack? How can I forget? <laughs> yeah, it was bad. They had decent reasons to believe that this was happening. First off, this was around the time that Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un were casually threatening war with each other before to, you know, deciding to become best buds. They fell in love. Mm -hmm. Secondly, though, everyone in Hawaii got this alert on their phone saying, emergency alert, ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. <laughs> I mean, if you're getting that text, it would be very proactive of you to follow the instructions. I'm going to treat this as real because, until I'm shown otherwise. Yes. Of course, 38, what I can assume, excruciating, excruciating minutes later. And d did we see a surge in babies being born uh, t three months ago or something at this point? I don't point? know. I don't know if the data is out yet. 
Man, yeah. we got to look into that. Mm -hmm. there, there's got to be some kind of evidence for that. We, we do know for a fact that at least one person had a heart attack. We talked about that recently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, there was probably a lot of crime during that. I, I don't probably. know. But it was a long time. Like it was 38 purge. minutes where you think you're going to fucking die. Uh, they got confirmation that the whole thing was uh, a big goof after that 38 minute time period. But for those 38 minutes, a lot of people in Hawaii were either having a fucking blast or most likely a very bad time because they thought they were going to die. Yeah. And probably a lot of people fucking. Probably. Or doing all their drugs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably. Probably lots of drugs and adultery going on. Yes. Anyway, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has now released an official report examining just how bad of a time everyone in Hawaii had during this missile oopsie. Uh, specifically, the report looks at social media posts made during the 38 minutes of uncertainty after the missile alert, as well as posts made in the 38 minutes following the news that it was a false alarm. And uh, what they found is pretty much what you'd expect. I don't need a report to know this, but now I do. During the period of uncertainty, people were trying to figure out what the hell was going on and also trying to emotionally process their apparent impending doom. And then afterwards, people were super fucking mad and mistrustful of authority because they thought they were about to die. Yeah. But it was a mistake. Uh, anyway, the biggest takeaway from what is essentially a giant social experiment. Yeah, big oopsie social experiment. We tricked the entire state of Hawaii into thinking they were going to die. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Tricking people in the hood that, that they're going to die. Gone wrong, uh, gone sexual. But yeah, the biggest takeaway here is that uh, people really don't like being told that they're about to die if they're not, in fact, about to die, which is like about as good of a takeaway as any YouTube social experiment. Yeah. It's like, we're going to see what happens to people. It's literally that Sam Pepper one where he kidnapped the guy. Yeah, it turns <laughs> out people don't like this. Yeah. yeah. Wow. We did it. Uh, anyways, and one last bit of news to lighten things up a little bit. Uh, Laura Loomer was back at it again last week at Twitter's New York City headquarters, shouting through a megaphone about how unfair it is that her account got banned. Unlike last time in November, though, when she handcuffed herself to the front door of the building, this time she got an actual permit and had to do all of her protesting from across the street. And it doesn't appear to have worked, because, as has been noted, Loomer was kicked off Twitter for repeatedly tweeting out some pretty Islamophobic shit in violation of Twitter's terms of service, which she was also repeatedly warned about before being banned. Yeah, Laura, you... I don't think they're going to unban you. Mm -mm. Anyways, the protest outside Twitter HQ, protest part two, it included about 20 other people who joined Loomer there, including investigative journalist Adriana Di Ciocio, who provided The Verge with some of the dumbest sound bites we've ever read. So let's just take a look. Here's what she said. When you go online and you're trying to search things and you get errors like 404 or 451, that means censorship. That means you're not allowed to find information that you are truly looking for. So when we go on platforms that we agree to by contract with TOS terms and a company is not, you know, complying with their terms, that is a problem and that's why we're here. We are here to show people truly what's going on behind the algorithms, behind active, active user, you know, active daily users things that are going on. Basically, we want free speech. I just tried getting an app developed because Twitter is censoring accounts, shadow banning, etc. You know what I'm saying? Followers are going down, views are going down. So I was talking to an app developer trying to get something that would contradict their algorithms. But you know, this private company that says they're not socialist and they're not trying to make a bias have APIs up where nobody can make an app and even try to go against that. One day she'll realize that her Wi-Fi went down temporarily. Yeah, I think that might be it. Speaking of Loomer though, very busy and recently teamed up with uh, yesterday's boy, Jacob Wall. Wall. Yeah. Uh, they were in uh, <laughs> Minneapolis. Once again, proving, like, really just driving home exactly why Laura Loomer was banned from uh, Twitter in the first place. Uh, they went to Minnesota and were running around, like, looking for the, the Sharia law no go zones. Yeah. Uh, because apparently, Minneapolis, uh, despite having one of the lowest crime rates of a major city in the country, is, uh, is now actually under Sharia law. Yeah. So she was just looking into that. <laughs> yeah, and apparently, according to them, in an armored car with security guards and bulletproof vests. Yeah, the whole security team. So they were just so scared. One of the one of their security guards, such a such a warrior that he does it all wearing Crocs. Uh huh. Pretty pretty tough well, guy. When you gotta protect people, you wanna be comfortable. Yeah, that's right. But you also don't wanna run. You need an excuse not to run. Yeah. Oh my my Crocs will fall off. <laughs> no, I'm not uh, gonna <laughs> chase that person down. Anyways, if you want to hear more about Jacob Wall and that whole situation, we did a whole video about it yesterday. Yeah. Uh, he up updated that. Him and uh, his old buddy, Jack Berkman. Teaming uh, up again. They're teaming up again, baby. And he's going to have his fly all the way down. Yeah, he's going to pull that fly all the way down. They're People gonna... were like, 
why'd you zoom in on us crotching that uh, thing? And I was like, because his, his fly was down for the entirety of the press conference. And yeah. It's hilarious. It's very funny. Yes. So that's exciting. They're going to be at CPAC uh, in the lobby, <laughs> giving an unauthorized presentation there. So very exciting stuff. Yeah. Watch the video from yesterday. <laughs> also watch uh, the most recent episode of Weekly Weird News where a gorilla cop saves the day. She did it. And uh, don't forget to go check out our sponsors uh, to, to say thanks for sponsoring the show and keeping us monetized when YouTube won't. Yeah. Picking up the slack. Anyways, thanks, and uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye-bye.